Hello, I'm Kyle Williamson. I'm here with John Broughton with Farragut Films, and uh, I'm involved in the Trek Isolation, but which is a spin-off of Farragut, and uh, I'd like to talk to John about, uh, he's got some new projects that they've been working on, and they just finished up a uh, film called The Crossing, mm -hmm. and what can you tell us about that, John? Well, it's, it's going to be our, our second to our last TOS, the original series of, of Farragut. We are uh, this year we're closing out. We will do one last film set in the original series venue and then we are moving forward. We're taking our characters 10 or 12 years forward in a new chapter of Farragut called Farragut Forward. <laughs> and um, we will be taking uh, this last episode will, will be kind of a crossover for Farragut as well as Trek Isolation. It'll, it'll allow the things that need to take place and explain things happen. Uh, but a lot of Trek isolation takes place on a planet, a mysterious one at that. And um, So we'll be filming that together before February of next year. So a year from now we will, we will film our last original series episode of, of Farragut um, and then move forward in the movie era of, of Star Trek, as it were, for Farragut were the movie, were the uh, Wrath of Khan movie, were the uniforms, the burgundy uniforms, the nice uh, costumes that they use, and the props and the sets. Um, we'll be moving forward with that. And a lot of the characters from Trek Isolation will also be involved with that. So it'll, it'll be a kind of a soup of, of Farragut and Trek Isolation folks involved in that project as well. And that kind of, it's nice to see that the Farragut universe expand to have the other ships and such, and we've helped many other different Searching fan films um, over the years, and, and this one has a lot, um, it's a lot closer to the heart on this one, I think, for Mike Bednar and me, in terms of the principles involved, and just getting back to filming on planet. Um, not everything has to take place on, on the ship, and um, that, I think, was one of the things that kind of drew me to Eric Moran and Dave Turner and yourself in terms of the, the project because it, it so much of it gets back to the heart of exploration of being on a mysterious planet and trying to find and investigate. So to me that was about Star Trek and, and um, I like the novelty approach um, in terms of a fourth Star Trek fan film because I think you guys recognize that it's not always about the ships. I mean the ships, yeah, absolutely, because it is a space navy at the end of the day, but at the same time they are explorers at heart, and going out there and seeing what's what's out there. Um, after we filmed this 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 last film, um, we'll be as I mentioned, we'll be all over Farragut Forward, and we'll be able to see some of the characters. They may be on a different ship. They may be on the same ship as the Farragut, uh, but a lot of great things are going to happen. It's great to have this universe expand and have different people involved. And, but people love cameos. And to see, uh, for example, Frank and Gina involved, and she'll, they'll be involved in some vignettes related to Trick Isolation. And then to see some of the Trick Isolation folks involved with Farragut, that continual crossover, I think people are really going to enjoy. Absolutely. I, I definitely think that having, having those additional characters show up in each other's films kind of adds legitimacy, like this is not just my little corner. Mm -hmm. It's actually a universe, which is a great thing. So The Crossing, what can you say about the storyline? The, the, the Crossing is essentially our Mirror Mirror episode. It, but it's not playing in the cliches of, okay, you're not going to necessarily see a Mirror Carter or a Mirror Tack and a Mirror Smithfield. It's not about that. We've just taken the concept that there's this mere alternate universe, and we brought that into our universe, the different that that ship, and the Farragut crew interacts with it. So, um, and and both entities are aware that the two separation of these two universes do exist, and so it's a really good, interesting approach, and um, it's also a reunion because Paul Sieber, who played Prescott, he's back on board the ship. Mark Hildebrand, who plays Captain Wilcox of the Potemkin. He was in one of our vignettes, just passing through. He's back. He also was in a lot of our other episodes as a Klingon commander and 
General Washington and for one of Aeneo. So it's kind of a reunion of sorts as well. And um, it, it's, it's got everything. It's action, adventure, a lot of fights, ship battle. You've got a love interest um, and love romance story involving Smithfield. It's more about her. And then for Tackett, there's something for him as well. Um, where I don't, I want to, I'll leave that as a surprise, but it's, it, it's all over the place and in a, in a respectful way. Um, it, it's, it, it's an episode that we thought of back in 2007, Paul Sieber, Mike Bender, and I, we, we talked about it, kicked about it during, and brainstormed about it during a Nationals game, and it was one of those pie in the sky, we'll never be able to make this kind of thing, and well, you know, over the years of growing sets and our partnership with Star Trek Continues, um, we were able to make it happen, and so we went for it. I can't wait to get it out to everyone. It'll be a, a very good episode. Hopefully our, I mean, I'm anticipating it'll be our best. Um, so, From what I've seen, every single Farragut film has just gotten better because, you know, learning the craft and uh, getting more comfortable being those characters. Mm -hmm. So I'm definitely looking forward to The Crossing. Um, now with Trek Isolation, I, I understand you'll actually appear in there. Y yes, we not, not as a major, you know, but, no, but as a, as just, a good just a nice element. little cameo, um, which I'm I am glad and honored to to provide. Uh, we did the the other um, prequel that showed um, Commander Jericho leaving the ferry, leaving as chief of security and going um, beaming aboard the Babylon, and uh, we wanted to. We're not showing any of the Babylon uniforms or the Babylon ship until the first film. So right now, the, the purpose of these prequels and speaking with Dave and, and Eric is give you give you some sort of backstory. We want you to feel vested when you see the actual film. You'll be, you'll understand who these people are, and you'll 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 want to connect with them a little bit better. So great idea to doing these little prequels. And so my my the the one that we're filming here in a few months um, in the rec room scene for the interior shots just has Carter as a, a quick cameo. But it, it's about Jericho and your character, Kyle. It's going to be a lot of fun. It's great. Again, having you there adds, you know, that additional element. And I think uh, I've been working on the script. I think you're going to. Okay. I can't wait to see Captain Hawkins <laughs> and Captain Carter well, together. We've been um, we've been well. collaborating. It's been a great team. Um, Eric Moran, Dave Turner, Brian Lessig, and myself, and we've come up with some really good um, prequels and some. Uh, and some really nice things for the actual film. And, and I'm, I'm very grateful for Dave and Eric. I mean, they, they, they keep me in the loop of things. And, and I, I, when I put a lot of our resources, whether it be the film sets or the talent, you know, people filming and being involved, costumes and other things, it was, I, I, I wanted to be involved in, and, and add the lessons learned from a lot of, a lot of painful le lessons <laughs> learned over the last 10 years. Uh, some costly mistakes and some things just, you know, the, having not, not being involved in the film industry. Um, a, lot of, a lot of things that I wanted to share. And, and in terms of even the character development, I didn't want you guys to make some of the mistakes that I had made. I wanted these characters to be very interesting. And so I was glad to provide insight and be glad that people appreciated that and wanted to hear the value and, and felt that I had something... Um, valuable to say and share. Absolutely. And we're definitely looking forward to Farragut Forward. You know, that sounds like a, an awesome project. Um, we were just at a panel not too long ago and uh, mentioned how it doesn't appear that a lot of fan films actually explore that era of Trek. There is, to my knowledge, there is no fan film group dedicated to doing the Rathacon, the movie era of, of classic Star Trek with accurate sets, detailed costumes, uh, the props, everything just as it was, all the attention to detail that we've done with both the animated and classic Trek we are doing with the movie era. We've got a lot of people that have come on board to help. We have um, Jim Brooks who wrote, who knew Robert Fletcher, the designer, costume designer. We have, he wrote a um, construction manual to how to make those burgundy uniforms that Lincoln Enterprise used to sell, and he wrote an addendum to the uh, manual, and he's involved, and, and um, we've, we've got uh, Larry Nemechek uh, 
as a technical consultant. Um, Marco Cran, the guy who wrote the Klingon Dictionary. We have um, our writer, Michael Jan Friedman, who, who's written a very prolific Star Trek writer, um, who wrote our pilot. So, uh, I've read some of his books, too. He's pretty good. I've only read one Star Trek novel, and that was The Crossover. And it was a great, because it tied in classic Trek to Next Gen, and that's probably why I read it. But it was a very well written, and, and I, one of my favorite books. Um, well, in terms of, <laughs> like I said, I've only read that one. In any event, we've got a cadre of people that have, uh, that are reputable, that are credible, that have some influence and they've come on board. And I think it's because we've proven ourselves over the last 10 years um, and they want to be a part of this. And so I'm really hoping that the Ferry Get Forward will be, I'm always hoping that something is better. And, and when I when I started talking to to Eric and Dave, I said, I want Trek Isolation to be better than Ferry Get. And I said, let me explain that. I said, you always want the next iteration of whatever it is to be better. And I said, there's lessons learned that from Ferry Get. Like if I ever had to do it over again, this is what I would do. And I said, for Trek Isolation, these are some suggestions and recommendations that I would do to make it better. And if I'm going to be a part of it, I'm obviously going to watch it at some point, and I want to enjoy it. I have been involved in some other different Star Trek fan films that I was involved in, Help Foster and such, and I can't stomach to watch them, and I'm not going to disparage them. But I want to be, at the end of the day, I want to be able to sit down in my man cave and be able to watch... <laughs> You know, Trek Isolation and enjoy it as much as I do, if not better than Farragut. And with Farragut Forward, I say the same thing. I want it to be better. And what I envision with that is I want it to be big cinema style filming. That's the way they did. They had darker sets. They had the movie Eric Klinger. It's a lot of bang up action and such. And that's why Eric, who it will be in the first Farragut Forward, our pilot, our proof of concept, um, he plays the main antagonist Klingon, but he also plays another role. It's I don't want to reveal too much, but he's got he's got the biggest role of this film. Well thank you so much Sean. We're looking forward to the crossing and of course Trek Isolation. And definitely Fair Get Forward sounds like there's a lot of exciting things coming. And thanks so much and uh yep. I'll see you on the flip side. Thank you. Thank you.